There are a few subtle differences on the procedures that I use related to if I'm working on real skin or if I'm working on fake skin. Right now I'm using the stencil stuff. This is a stencil application product. I've heard from some of my students that they find that speed stick actually works a lot better for applying a stencil to fake skin. I haven't tried that myself yet, so I'm right now just gonna stick to using the stencil stuff. I did clean the fake skin with rubbing alcohol, which is the same thing I do with a real client. I will spray down their skin where the stencil is going to go, get it nice and clean, wipe it down with uh, rubbing alcohol and get it nice and dry. I do the same thing with the fake skin. I use a surgical marker to make little registration marks to help me line up my stencil. Here I'm going to pull up the photo of the artwork so that I can make sure I orient it correctly. I was worried that I was going to tilt it too far one way or the other, and I want to keep it true to how the artwork was drawn. So I'm just going to eyeball that, and what I'm doing, I'm placing the stencil on the skin with the ink side down, and I can still see through the transfer paper, so I'm getting it lined up to where I think it looks good, and once I'm happy with how it's positioned, I'll make some registration marks. I'll draw a mark starting on the paper and carry it out onto the skin, and then I'll make a little cross mark along the edge of the paper. So that way I can apply my stencil application product and then place the stencil back in the exact same spot. So I shake this stuff up really good. And this is one of those things you'll just have to do a few times to figure out you know, how much or how little to use. I put out a little bit and then just start rubbing it in the area where the stencil is going to go. And I actually rub it for a little while because I want to make sure that the entire area gets coated as evenly as possible. So I'll actually spend some time here working it, trying to knock down the high areas, trying to get it nice and even. And then if it seems too liquidy on there, I'll let it sit for a little bit to tack up. Because what can happen is you can put your stencil on and some areas will stick and some areas might not stick. So you'll have little spots where you've got no stencil lines. So that's why it's good practice to spend a little bit of time trying to get this stencil application product on nice and smooth and evenly. This particular fake skin that I'm using, this is a very high quality fake skin. This is from a company called Pound of Flesh. Uh, these particular fake skins are very expensive. This one I think is like $40 for one piece. So I only use them for special occasions. However, this is the best skin I've found. Not all skins are created equal. This stuff is almost a half an inch thick. It's very stretchy. It just feels nice. It takes ink really well. So now I'm lining up my registration marks. I usually pick one at the bottom and one at the top and try and line up the middle of the stencil first. Then I'll gently apply pressure along the center and then push out from the center to the edges nice and evenly and also very carefully. If the stencil application product is too wet still, you will actually see your stencil lines start to flare out underneath the transfer paper. Here I'm just smoothing it out with a paper towel, pressing the areas down. Sometimes you can see the areas that didn't get ink as well. So what I'll do with a client is I'll put a little bit of green soap onto a paper towel. And then I'll gently rub it in the area that didn't take the ink very well. And usually that's enough to transfer the ink to the skin. It doesn't work as well on fake skin but it works good on real skin. The next step is to peel the stencil off. I just pick a corner and peel gently and check out the lines underneath as I peel. Make sure everything looks good. So with fake skin, it's a good idea to let that ink dry. I went ahead and let mine dry for a day, and then I'm going to put spray fix on it. You don't put spray fix on a client. This is just for the fake skin. At this point, I'm going to make decisions on which needles I'm going to use. I try to economize and not use a lot of needles unless I absolutely have to on a piece. Uh, for this particular one, I've decided that a nine curved magnum is going to be my main workhorse. I'm going to do the majority of the tattoo with a nine curved magnum. 
I'm also inspecting uh, with a 13 curved mag. I'm checking the width of the needle and just holding it over the artwork to get an idea of if it's too big or if it's gonna be too small. Larger areas of smooth value will go in better with a larger needle than with a smaller needle. So that's why I'm thinking a 13 curved mag might be good as well. I also should mention that these are bug pin needles, meaning they are number 10s. They're a little bit smaller in diameter than your standard number 12 tattoo needles. These are ideal for black and gray realism. They put smaller holes into the skin they allow the skin to uh, not get as damaged so you can do more passes. In general, you will get smoother results than with the larger needles. You definitely don't want to overuse the spray fix. Just a nice, quick, light pass over it. Otherwise, your lines could flare out uh, very badly. You can let it dry for about 20 minutes and then do another coat over the top of it. The nice thing about the spray fix is it actually makes your stencil come out darker. So the lines were a little thin when I put on the stencil. Once I put the spray fix on, it got a lot darker and looked a lot nicer. So here I'm grabbing a bib and some tape for my work area just to keep it organized and clean. I'm also grabbing a couple gloves. Ink is very messy, so even when you're practicing, it's a good idea to have gloves on just to help minimize the mess. I'm also grabbing some A&D ointment packets. You can use A&D or you can just use straight Vaseline. Any type of petroleum jelly will work well. This is one of the differences you'll find in working with fake skin and real skin. With real skin, you use green soap to clean up your ink as you're working. With fake skin, green soap doesn't work very well. So you actually use the petroleum jelly or the A&D ointment. Any of your cloth tapes that you use, I would recommend that you just fold the tip back when you put it away. It makes it so much easier finding the end the next time you use it. I'm gonna grab a rinse cup and fill that with distilled water. I actually have a portable sink in my workshop area that I keep filled with distilled water. Next, I'm gonna grab my set of gray wash inks and I'm going to grab some black coloring ink. The black coloring ink will be for all the darkest areas in the tattoo, and then my gray wash set will be used for everything else. Since I'm going to be replicating a pencil drawing, one way to think about it is my black ink is like my charcoal pencil, and my gray wash inks are like my graphite pencils. Now I'm going to grab the needles I'm going to use. I'm going to grab that 9 curved mag bug pin, and then I'm going to grab the 13 curved mag bug pin. I should also point out that these particular curved magnums that I'm using have long tapers. I'm also going to grab a five round liner. I'm going to use this in any areas where I want a nice, clean, sharp edge. Even though this is practice, it's good habit to prepare your paper towel pile. You will tear individual sheets from a paper towel roll and stack them in your work area and these will be what you use to wipe away ink as you're working. You don't want to grab from a paper towel roll while you're working with a client because that becomes a cross-contamination issue. While I'm working on a tattoo, I like to have the reference image close by for me to look at while I'm working. So I have a very heavy-duty adjustable iPad stand that I use in my work area. Now when I'm working with a client, I make sure that I cover the iPad with plastic because while I'm working, sometimes I will touch the screen with my gloved hands to zoom in or zoom out. I'll be using ink caps for this particular tattoo. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up one of my A&D packets. You could also just use Vaseline. If you'll be using Vaseline in an actual tattoo session, you'll wanna get some tongue depressors and then use the tongue depressor to remove the Vaseline from the jar and put it in your workstation. So here I'm going to apply a puddle of A&D to my bib. And then I'm going to take an ink cap and dip the bottom into the A&D and then affix it to the bib. This will help keep them in place so they don't slide around while I'm working. So now I'm going to put my ink into the ink caps. I definitely want to make sure I pour these out in a specific order so I always know which ink I am dipping my needle into. 
especially when you're using gray wash, these all look black, so you won't know which one is which. So it's very important to put it in a specific order. So this is my darkest value. This particular brand, the ink is labeled dark. This one is labeled medium. So I will put that one next to the dark. The one next to medium is going to be light. And next to the light will be the extra light. And then the ink cap on the furthest left, that is where I will put the black coloring ink. I'm going to put out a little more A and D ointment. Normally during an actual tattoo session, you use the ointment where you're going to tattoo. It lightly lubricates the skin against the friction of the needle. It also helps keep the ink from spreading all over the place and it helps protect your stencil. In this case, we're primarily going to be using it to actually clean up the ink in place of the green soap, which we would use in a normal session. I'm going to start tattooing with the nine curved mag. I simply remove the needle cartridge from its packaging. I then use the cartridge to puncture the plastic barrier on the end of my tattoo machine. And then I twist the needle cartridge clockwise until it stops. And then it's locked in and I'm ready to start tattooing. I have a custom pair of eye loop glasses that I use while I'm tattooing. Next, I'm going to start the machine and set the speed. I usually run anywhere from 7 to 8 volts, so I just check and make sure that's what it's set at. And now while it's running, I'll inspect how far out the needle is coming from the needle cartridge. I like to have my needle out about 3 millimeters. I let the needle out further or retract it by rotating the grip of my tattoo machine in one direction or the other. So right now I'm fine tuning how far out my needle is going by sight. I'm going to use a little bit more A and D on this fake skin than I normally would on a real client. I just want to get it nice and lubed up so that my hand can move freely over it and also try and keep the stencil protected for as long as possible. I'll take a paper towel and put it into my non-machine hand and I'll be using that to wipe away ink as I work.